Good evening. Who likes train strikes? <laughs> don't? Why don't you? Are you afraid that you will take the train from Antwerp to Brussels and put it in China if you strike too much? Ain't gonna happen. Anyway, my research is about maintenance. So that's basically the thing that your parents do that they can drive you around all weekend with their car, but what you don't do with your bike, and that's why you go to Vail all the time during the week. Anyway, uh, maintenance. Let's dive into the essentials. When you are at a reception, there's several ways of distributing the drinks. First option, it's self-service. You yourself have to go to the bar every time you want a drink. Not very nice, right? So a second option is that you have waiters that come round, for example, every 15 minutes. The only problem is you have some very decent, mature people who only take little nips from their glass. And when uh, the waiter comes by, actually their glass is always still pretty full and the waiter is always too early. On the other hand, you have the bench drinkers who think, yeah, free booze, free free, it's for me. Well, those people, <laughs> for them, the waiter is always too late and they went already twice to the bar uh, to get a refill before the waiter comes. That's why I have a different way of distributing the drinks at a reception. So a third option is that the waiters are actually put on standby. And then if you want a drink, you can actually wave at the waiter and he will come. So you're standing in a group, the, people, uh, the person next to you thinks, hmm, I could use a drink. He says, waiter, please refill my drink and you see an opportunity. So the waiter comes, fills your friend's drink and you can also ask for a refill. However, if your glass is still pretty full, you will not ask for a refill because you don't want to look like an alcoholic. On the other hand, it can be that your friends are having a very tense discussion and basically you're the only one drinking. In that case, you will see your uh, glass getting more and more empty and after a while you think, hmm, my glass is almost empty, I will ask the waiter myself to come. So you ask the waiter yourself to come, he comes, pours the drink and you're happy again. However, it can be that the waiter actually needs to get a new bottle because it's empty, and by the time he comes back, your glass is already empty. Or even worse, <laughs> you've put down your glass, and they took it away, and you're at a reception without a glass. <laughs> <laughs> so, small recap, or self-service. Mm. <coughs> Second option, waiters that are always too late or too early. Third option, you always get your drinks when you need them. Only problem is, I don't have a PhD in champagne, so, <laughs> Instead of a reception, let us consider a train. Now, you can uh, buy a train if you're the NMBS and just say, let it go, and uh, we don't do anything. The only problem is you will probably have a lot of delays all the time because they're always broken. So, not very good. Second option, you don't have a waiter, but you have a mechanic that sees the train, for example, every half a year. The only problem is, just as an example, they usually are too early and sometimes they will be too late. Not very good. Third option, you monitor something on the train, let's take something simple, like the oil level. If an opportunity turns up, you can do uh, maintenance on the train if you see that it's needed, but if it's not needed, you will not do it. You don't want to look like an alcoholic, remember? Uh, another thing, it can be that the train is just running smoothly, but you see that your oil level is decreasing. In that case, you will force maintenance on the train, uh, just as you call the waiter yourself, because yeah, you need to do something. Unfortunately, there's still the chance of ending up without a glass at the reception. <laughs> We're talking about the NMBS here. Most likely, you tend to often disagree with the NMBS. Luckily for you, I consider that in my research. So the NMBS will say, yeah, first of all, if he sees an opportunity, it will cost us this much. If he force maintenance, it will cost us this much. And if uh, there's a derailed train, nah, not very nice, but there's still a cost related to it and they can actually compare it to the other costs. However, you, you don't care about the cost of the NMBS until there is a ticket prices, but you only care about not dying. <laughs> so, uh, you don't care. Uh, well. Anyway, um, the thing is, usually nobody likes derailed trains. There's always a big cost attached to it. Uh, and in our research, we are very good at avoiding derailed trains, so basically everybody wins, although some people win a bit more than others. Now, lastly, it's very important for our method to actually have opportunities that you can seize. The more opportunities, the better it will work. And you know what is a very good opportunity? The train strike. And you know why? Well, when the unions like to strike, they need to pay the strikers. So, one day, 
they will ask the uh, one day they will ask the conductors to strike, and another day they will ask the drivers to strike, because that way they can strike twice as much with the same amount of money. <laughs> they know their economics if it suits them. <laughs> For the same reason, they will never ask the mechanics to strike, because if the mechanics strike, well, all the trains are still driving and they don't annoy anyone. So basically, <laughs> you can do all the maintenance that you want during a train strike, and a train strike is a very good opportunity. So if you just slightly ignore the fact that the train strike costs 1.3 million, it takes the entire economy down, everybody hates it, then actually, train strikes are very good opportunities to, do, uh, to avoid derailed trains. So, who likes train strikes? 